Hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going to talk about five things you should practice with Sinkisk. If you're a player that likes to go into training mode to kind of warm up your fingers, warm up your brain, remember how to use the character before you go into the, the hellscape of online, these are five things that you should practice in training mode before you do so. The first one is, in my opinion, probably the most... Um, the most required or the most necessarily or the most important thing you should practice with Sin is practice spacing his 2S. His 2S is basically his keystone button. It's a really long reaching disjoint button that's crouching, can't be 6P'd obviously, and it leads into his beak driver which is his main, you know, win condition. So making sure you can space out a 2S correctly will suit give you so much advantage online because it beats so many of your opponent's buttons and it le lets you go for such safe oki if you ever get a knockdown whether it's beak driver or anything you can go for this they kind of can't mash out they can't grab out they can't even dp because it's a disjoint and it won't even hit the button so using 2s is such an awesome thing so i recommend putting the ai onto whatever difficulty just any difficulty as long as they move and just trying to only hit 2S. And whatever distance you are, you want to try and move around so that you're going for this 2S and see what distances you can hit it at. Go for different knockdowns. Try and get your dash in and 2S because different knockdowns will push the opponent different far away depending on different amounts of gravity and lots of things will change the distance that you can hit a 2S. So you're going to practice all these different types of hits you're going to get on the opponent and where you can time a 2S and you want to really space it so you get the real tippy tip. Because when you're spacing it to get the super tippy tip, that's when it's at its most powerful. So when you're spacing your slash buttons correctly, you can move on to the next tool. Oh my god, what the hell was that? The next thing you should probably practice is make sure you still have the finger muscle memory to go for his Kara supers. It's a really important part of his gameplay, and if you're not used to doing them, you're going to want to practice them basically every time before you play until it becomes ingrained into your soul. I'm not going to explain exactly how to do the Kara inputs in this video, I have another one doing that, so go check that out. But when you're training, you want to make sure you go for your Kara into all of your super options. So you can go for your Beak Driver into your Tyrant Rave. Your Overhead can go into Tyrant Rave or the Rider Lightning, which is important because sometimes you might want to do that if you want to go full screen, carry them from the Overhead and get the Wall Break. Maybe you're not close enough to get a Tyrant Rave Wall Break. After your Elk Hunt, you can go for a Tyrant Rave, uh, a Rider Lightning even after the follow up. After the follow up for the Overhead, you can go for a Tyrant Rave. After Beak Driver, you're only really going to go for a Tyrant Rave. And after a DP, you can go for basically either. Make sure you practice these a few times if you're really dropping them. Make sure you slow it down and just do it super simple. Um, maybe try practicing the down for down for down for mashing P method. But just really practice and make sure you can do these because it's a really important part of his game game plan. If you get hits like over here, you're not going to get much unless you go for a Kara Ride the Lightning. And a lot of the time they're his cheapest and best option to get really juicy damage, nice knockdowns, and just... <laughs> it's basically how he wins most of the time. It's where he gets most of his advantage. So make sure you practice it. Next, it's actually really important you practice your delays or your staggers, whatever you want to call them. Because against Sin, people really, really like to jump and to mash because he's got a lot of gimmicky things. Like he's got the gazelle step where he goes into a throw or just into, you know, more buttons and stuff. So people are really keen to mash on you or maybe to jump away so they can, you know, air block the overhead low mix ups. Or they like to jump to get away from these things that cover the floor, his 2S included. People like to jump, they like to mash, so using staggers and delays, like delaying your inputs for close slash and things, is really, really important. So go into 
your counterattack settings, put your opponent in after block, and put in your options here. So you want to have the opponent jumping, I already had that, <laughs> have your opponent um, doing like two Ps or whatever their fastest button is, and also have them, for now we'll just do those two I think. And you can put them on random. So you want to practice doing your delays. So maybe if you get a close slash, you want to delay your 2s a little bit, where you'll either get a counter hit or maybe catch their jump. Getting this stuff is really, really important and making sure you not only know how to delay them the right amount, but you also know what combos to go for after you get your hits off of random parts of your combos. So you don't actually need to do a delay after your 2s. That's something that's important to know because it actually is an automatic frame trap into your 5h. See, I don't need any delay there, and it catches them trying to jump or mash. So that's really good. But you also should make sure you practice um, your delays with your special moves. That's arguably even more important. Because that's where his real gimmick comes in. Everyone could do close slash into 2s staggers and stuff. Get counter hits like that. But Sin can do it off of his special moves. So if Kai is trying to mash here, I have to make sure I can delay my follow-ups the right amount why I don't get completely stuffed like I did just there. He was able to 2 peep me out of it. He would probably be able to jump out of it too. So I need to delay it a little bit and not do it instantly like that where it's just a true block string. Because if it's a true block string, what's the point? It's just like a few hits does a tiny bit of chip damage and now it's just their turn. If I do a little bit of a delay, I'll catch them trying to jump. I'll catch them on counter hit. And if I catch their counter hit, I can get some juicy damage. So practicing your slight delays on your beat driver is really important because for some people this isn't intuitive, especially after special moves. People usually aren't used to going for delaying into special move follow-ups because that's pretty unique. Obviously the same goes for your overheads and your DPs as well. Oh, it's a little bit hard because you have to make sure only the second hit hits. But making sure you time these follow-ups correctly will make your offense so much more potent because your opponent can't just jump and mash out of things willy-nilly and it makes them a lot more afraid to go for these things. And if they're afraid to go for these things, that's what lets you go for things like dash-ins into <laughs> your grabs and stuff. And that's, that's what you want. You want your opponent to be scared so you can do stupid stuff because you're sin. Another one that can be a little bit tricky to time is your elk hunt. You have to delay it a little bit more than the others because it's... I don't know, just has slightly more hits done, I suppose. And it's a little tighter in the gap between getting counter hit and getting, well, just a full block string. But if you do it correctly, as you can see, the reward is quite ginormous. You should also know what other things have little gaps in them. So like 2k into your 6h will actually frame trap and it'll beat people trying to jump, so if they mash or try to jump, you can easily go into any of your special moves and get juicy combos, and if it's a big count hit, well then I guess you just get even more of a big juicy combo, slightly cheaper. Um, also your close slash into 6k, even if the opponent's mashing, you can actually get a combo off of it. If you get a micro dash up, not if they jump obviously, but see so you can combo off of the, the trade. And yeah, going for stuff like this where you just make sure you know where there are gaps and where you can catch the opponent to see 2Ps into 6P or catch the opponent trying to jump or mash. And it's really important you use things and you abuse them because people just love to mash against him so much that you need to make sure you rub it in their face that I know you're trying to mash and I'm going to screw you over for it. Or else they're just going to keep doing it. So practice your Gatling delays. Practice your special move delays. And the combos that you get off of them. And practice your command normals and study where there are gaps that the opponent will be beaten if they try to mash or press buttons. Or jump. Mash or jump. Those are the different things. Right, the next thing you want to practice is do a little bit of practice of controlling your supers. Your two different supers have two different things you have to think about controlling wise. Let me make you stop guarding because that's boring. With your 
Tyrant Rave, obviously the thing you're going to be practicing is getting the ultra timing. I have a separate video actually talking about how to get the timing correct for this, so you can go into that if you'd like. But basically the method I do is count 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 is when they bounce on the floor, 2 is when they get the peak of their arch, 3 is when you press the button, and 4 is when you see it all happen on the screen. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. That was a good input. One, two, three, four. And that was an ultra input. So basically, if you use this method correctly, you're basically guaranteed to get a good input or a perfect input for your super. And just practice going for it so you have either the memory of counting or you have the memory of muscle memory to go for the perfect inputs because it adds so much damage to any random hit that he can get, especially if he's carrying it off of bar slashes into beak driver. It's super, super crazy. So crazy, oh my god. And also briefly practice is um aiming your ride the lightning super. So if you're mid-screen, you want to do some things where you go in for like vertical things where you go upwards so that you don't break the wall too quickly. If you want to get the big ultimate burst at the end. So as you go upwards at the end to prevent breaking the wall. If I have them in the corner, you can kind of do a turnaround and into up or down, and then do the neutral one. And if your back is in the corner, you can actually just do um, two diagonal turnarounds and you don't even have to do the mega burst to break the wall. So practice the timing for Tyrant Rave. Oh, first try. And practice the aiming for Ride the Lightning. Oops. <laughs> and the last thing you want to practice a little bit is to make sure you have your Oki options and the timing for your Oki options still under wrap. So Oki options include things like your close slash OTD dash cancel. As you can see, I messed it up there. You can do things like this. It lets you have really powerful offense. You have your IAD frame kill after a throw. You have your safe jump. You have your meaty options after a, a beak driver, whether it's an elk hunt or a 2S. All of these are things you want to make sure that you practice so that you can sustain your offense. And sustaining offense is obviously the key to victory. I do have a full guide for all of his Oki tools, but you already, if you already know what they are, just make sure you practice them from time to time so that you don't mess them up, because that's embarrassing. And um, just for a sneaky little sixth bonus tip, um, it's a bonus tip because I can't really call it a full tip because I'm not very good at it myself, but I think it's really important that you practice some aggressive anti-airs. What I mean by aggressive anti-airs is you're not really reacting to IADs and like defensively using a 6P and stuff. You're trying to hit the opponent out of the air when the opponent is doing this like time-wasting jumping that people do a lot against Sin. And you've probably noticed it if you've played with him for even just a few matches. So people really like to spend their time hanging around in the air um, because they're really scared of your things like your 2S and your L hunt and stuff. You cover the ground really well. You've got really good ground coverage. All of your big buttons, plus on block, <laughs> lows and stuff. So a lot of the time people go into the air. And since air options aren't that good, so things like his 6H, which would seem like really good as air to airs, unfortunately it has so much recovery, you kind of can't block until you hit the ground, which is different, you know, which is dump P. So, um... For his aggressive anti-air practicing, I suggest obviously you put the opponent into a jumping state. And you kind of practice your ways of how you're going to dash in and go for your jumping options. Practice getting conversions off of your, your jump P's because his jump P is, in my opinion, his best anti-air after maybe jump slash. Jump slash is a lot easier to confirm off of. But it is a little bit slower and obviously has a bit more recovery. It's not as bad as jump H, but it's still pretty bad, which is why I would like to get a lot better at using his jump P, but unfortunately it's just a little bit hard to convert off of. So 
So if you do things like this, like time it as you go down, you can get stuff like this, but it is just, as you can see, a little bit tricky and a little bit inconsistent. So unfortunately, it's not the best damage-wise, but it is usually the best way of aggressively getting people out of the air when they're doing stuff like this. Another option is to just dash in and go for your 5Ps, because your 5Ps have great horizontal hitboxes, so as long as you're in the general vicinity, it's pretty likely that you're going to smack them out of the air, even if you accidentally end up on the other side. Sin turns around really quickly with his 5P, so if they IAD or jump over the top of you like they're going at weird angles and stuff, he'll easily turn around and getting conversions off of 5P is actually luckily really easy. Even if you like don't react as well and you don't get in for a close slash, he's still got good options and you can like dash in, do micro dashes into 5P, um, 5P, You can really easily confirm like 5p5, like 5p, like 5, like you're mashing 5p a little bit, then dash in 6k, whatever. I mean 5k. Or you can dash in and get a close slash. If you're a little bit faster than that. And also obviously you have the option of going for close slash, but it whiffs a lot. Um in my experience, you have to be at like the perfect position and it has a lot of dead zones. It looks like it would hit the opponent, but it just doesn't. So I don't really tend to use that. 5k is kind of okay. It has pretty... It's probably the next option after 5p. It just has a little longer recovery, but I do like how it has slightly longer active frames and has a slightly... um Strange hitbox, unfortunately. It has some of the dead zone problems of close slash, especially when he has running momentum. But uh, yeah, so as for aggressive anti-airs, I suggest you practice getting combos off of jump P, but unfortunately I cannot advise you because I'm not good at that myself. Maybe if you go for stuff like this, oh, maybe that's the way. So just go for one jump P and then go into your other jump ins. Okay. Or you can even just like dash in and not get a combo. Interesting. Okay, maybe that's the tip now. Go for your, for a single jump P, and then if it if like if it doesn't hit the opponent and you miss, you can block because you cover a lot quicker, or you can jump out of the way or whatever. So it's a lot less recovery than your other buttons. But if it does hit, you can go into your other buttons and do some kind of combo, depending on how close you are. Or at least you're getting a bit more, and you get some kind of oki okay stuff. Cool. Or you can just run in and get your 5Ps and go for stuff like this. So, aggressive anti-airs are cool. And just a little bonus tip that I wanted to talk about, but I'm not very good at myself. <clears throat> Anyways, now we have... Please stop jumping. Now we have gone over five things that you should practice with Sin before you go online. If you're the kind of person that likes to train before they go online, of course. I'm not telling anyone what to do, but if you like to practice... These are the things you should practice and some tips on how to practice them. Because I think these are the keystone pieces of Sin's gameplay. And if you can really knuckle down and nail these things, like his 2S spacing, his timing on his supers, um, his delay options to stop the opponent from mashing and jumping, all this stuff will make him such a menace to fight against and it'll make you a way better Sin player. So just a few minutes of practicing these things each day I think can go a super, super long way. And some of them I need to practice myself, like the secret sixth one, I definitely need to practice because I'm an absolute flop at air to airs with Sin, or just general anti airs with Sin. So I hope this guide was useful to you. It's gonna be useful to me because I'm gonna keep doing all these things. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>